The second elasticity figure you need to know something about is income elasticity of demand. In economics, income is always referred to with the letter Y. So YED is short for income elasticity of demand. First of all, know the formula. The formula, percentage change in quantity demanded, divided by percentage change in income. In this case, we're asking how much will demand for a particular product respond in response to a change in income. So let's look at an example. In 2000, incomes in the UK increased by 4%. In the same year, gym memberships rose by 6%. So we can work out the income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of demand will be the percentage change in quantity demanded, which in this case is 6%, so it's plus 6, divided by the percentage change in income. And we're told that income's increased by 4%, so that would be plus 4. So, work it out, you get plus 1.5. Okay. So that's the first two stages. The third stage is to comment on what this means. Now remember, you've got to comment on two things. You've got to comment on the sign, and you've got to comment on the size. When you're looking at income elasticity of demand, the sign can be either positive or negative. In this case, we've got a positive number, okay, a positive number. If it's a positive number, it means that the product is a normal good. In economics, a normal good is one which you buy more of as your income goes up, and you buy less of as your income goes down. So, this case is definitely a normal good. The second thing you can do is you can look at the size of the number. Once again, you compare it to one. In this case, we've got a number 1.5, which is evidently greater than 1. So what we've got here is a product which is income elastic. In other words, demand for this product will vary more than proportionately to a change in income. Sometimes you'll get a very large number. And if you get a very large positive number, you can refer to it as a superior good. Right. The alternative is when you work out the calculation, you'll get a negative number. If you get a negative number, then it is referred to as an inferior good. And once again, in economics, an inferior good is defined as one that you buy more of as your income goes down and less of as your income goes up. So what use would knowing income elasticity of demand figures be for a business? The key thing is that it will help the business plan for the future output or production. If it's selling a normal good, so if you're running a series of gyms in the UK, and incomes in the UK have been rising over time, then you know that more and more people will be taking out gym memberships. And so you can plan to expand your gyms across the region or across the country. But you'll also know that if incomes fall, if the economy goes into a recession, or a particular area is hit badly by, say, a closure of a major employer, then the sales of gym memberships will fall by 1.5 times whatever the fall in income is. So if income falls by 6% in a region, then the gym memberships will go down by 1.5 times 6 or 9%. Likewise, if you're a supermarket and the economy is doing well, you will stock more of the upmarket type products because people will buy more of those. In a recession, you'll bring out more value lines, more um, economy lines, because as people's incomes go down, they will buy more of these low-priced products. Once again, however, the firm should not place too much emphasis on the figure. The key issue I would focus in on here is, is, is how relevant is this income elasticity figure to your business? So what we've got here is the UK figure is plus 1.5. But if you're running a series of gyms in the West Midland, is the figure 1.5 relevant to you? 
Is it going to be higher or lower in the West Midlands? So ask, if it's a national figure, is it relevant to you? If you're running very upmarket gyms, would it be as relevant to you as if you're running down market gyms? So which part of the market, which market segment are you in? Is the overall figure relevant to your segment? You can then use all the uh, arguments I've explained before. You can question uh, whether the figure is an estimate, how valid is it, how did you gather the information, how old is the information, and all the other things I mentioned earlier. But specifically for this one, I would say how relevant is the overall national figure for your particular region? Or if it's an income elasticity figure for internal flights in the UK, how relevant is it for the flight that you run from Norwich to Manchester or from Norwich to Newquay?